So, hello everybody. It seems we're moving fast and I have already version 13.1 out for Convert with MOS and I went even deeper in Decent Sampler and how I can provide a generic template for it which adds many, many controls to it. But something else I changed should not be overlooked in this version. For sample files, you have now a new option to ignore loops because it turns out some auto samplers add loops to one-shot files even if it's disabled to loop at all. And to get rid of these, if you have, for example, a piano sample or a bell sample, it makes sense to ignore these if they are looping the whole region, for example. So pretty helpful little addition. But let's look into Decent Sampler. In the last version, I added the option to add two templates, one for the UI section, one for the effects section. Turns out it's simpler to use only one, and this allows also to add other features. Let's first have a look at how this works. So you can select here to override these, but if you don't fill out anything, it will use the default template. So let's have a look how this works and what comes out of this thing now. So I have here one of my test files, which is a single layer pad sound from my good old O1W, which I sampled back in the days. And we will turn this in a kind of more synthy thing. So we don't change anything here. We simply say, convert this here to my selected output folder. We will get now a decent sampler preset. And I prepared here a setup in Bitwig where we can load this file into. And as you see, you get many more parameters now. You get the amplitude setting for the envelopes, you get a filter section, a delay, and a reverb. Let's give that a listen. So that's the normal sound, how it comes out. Then you could, for example, add more attack. Or turn down the filter. Or use the envelope. And I need to jump through some hoops to make this work because to come up with a generic template, it's more difficult than to have a specific tweaked one for a specific sample set. But this is now a good starting point to create your own ones. But I need to explain some things first. Let's have a look at the template. And to do that, we create a copy of that. So you can say you want to create your own one and select an empty folder for that. And then you can say, please create this template in the selected folder. And here in that folder, we get now one single template. It's called UI.xml. We had that before, but we don't have the other one now. And you can have three sections in there, which are part of how Decent Sampler works. So we have this modulator section, you have the effect section, the MIDI section, and the UI section. And you can pretty change this to your hearts alike. So you could easily add more effects like a chorus or the saturation effect. They also have this is pretty straightforward if you're a little bit familiar how decent sampler works. What I also added here with this MIDI section, it supports the modulation wheel. So we can do some modulation here. And this works like this. This binds it to a modulation amount of the LFO, which is up here. And you might be curious why this is position one. This is because the content of the modulator section is added to the modulator section that is automatically generated by Convert with MOS. And this already inserts an envelope. So we need to take a look at the full output we got here. So if we take a look at that, you will see here's also already an envelope to modulate the filter frequency because I had to do this because filter envelopes seem only to work on a group level 
and not on the top instrument level. So I had to insert that in each and every group. So if you have more groups, you have now an option in Convert with MOS, which says add low pass filter to all groups if none is present. So if you already have a filter setting which comes out of your source material, it will keep that. But there, if there is none, it will add a low pass filter to ensure that this filter section here is always working. Working. So, which means if you have that enabled and you, I think you should always enable that, then you will have in each of your groups, you will have such an effect section. And to make this work, this is also a little bit problematic. If you look here at the knob, so the knob does here change six groups. So it changes the filter frequency of the first six groups. That's uh, just a number I put in there, which I guess will work in the most cases. So if you have more groups in your settings, you need to add more bindings here so that the filter works on all groups. Or if you want to have it work only on some groups, then you need to also adapt this accordingly. So, so much for the filter settings. The other thing worth mentioning is the envelope of the amplitude. So the amplitude envelope, there's also a problem depending on where you assign it. If you, for example, assign it on a sample or group level, then it seems not to work to change it on a groups level. I'm not sure if that also is by design or if that is a bug, but this seems to be the case. So what I did now before in the previous versions, I always assigned it on the sample level to have the most flexibility. What I'm now doing is automatically aggregating the amplitude envelopes if they are identical. So if all the settings on the sample level are the same, it will be put on the group level. And if all group settings are also the same, it will end up here on the groups level, which is the highest instrument level. And this one is addressed here in the UI. So if you have input source material, which has different amplitude envelopes, it will not work and you manually need to adjust to that. Either create additional bindings for the groups, address them on the group level, or provide separate knobs for the different groups where you can control their volume independently. And another thing I ran into is that the controls do not pick up the value which are set on the envelope itself, but they use their own value setting. And even if you you don't set that value, it uses the default value of zero and all your envelope settings are set to zero. So I came up with another workaround that we have here these four variables. For example, one is nth attack value, this 2% assigns at the end and the beginning. And these will be replaced by convertive mass with the settings for the amplitude envelope. So it ensures that the controls match what is actually set for the groups element. Yeah, and in the global effects section, as I said, you can easily add other effects that Decent Sampler provides, for example, like the chorus module or convolution reverb. This is pretty straightforward. Add the effect and add some knobs to that which control them. And you also can for sure shuffle around them, add images to them and these things. Maybe to give you a very simple example, we could add a background image and I prepared one here for you. And as you maybe have noticed, if we go back to Bitwig, I left an empty space here so you can quickly insert a logo if you want and just keep everything like it is and add simply your own logo and you're ready to deliver an instrument to the world. And yeah, let's do that. I have here, as I said, a simple background image. Let's have a look. It's just a black space with my <laughs> very, very old logo back from the Atari ST days. And let's try that to put that here in the template. Back in the template, let's call that also background.png. That's the background image we had there. As I said also in a previous video, you could also create here subfolders if you have lots of images to have this in a more clean way. For example, let's try it like this. So you could have here images as well. Use a forward slash here, which is important. And then let's give that a try back to convert with MOS. Let's generate this now with this set folder here. So it uses not the default template, but our modified version. Let's create it. And we have now a second version in our output folder. If I can find the output folder again, here's the output folder. So here's the second version and let's load up that. 
and here you get now the logo with it. Yeah, so much for that. I think pretty helpful. If you have questions about that, just write me down in the comments. And until next time, make some funky music.